Okay, there seems to be a lot of uh, questions about 8.5. So let's go through uh, a typical question. Here's number two on the homework. It's 855 in the book. Okay, they give you some sort of word problem where you'll notice we're dealing with standard deviations, right? This is standard deviation, not variance. Variance, you have to square it. Okay, so workers at a certain soda drink factory collected data on volumes of a simple random sample. 20 can soda, right? Those volumes have a mean of 12.9 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.09. That's a sample standard deviation, right? That's the standard deviation of your sample of 20 things. They appear to be from a normally distributed population. That's very important because in order to run these type of statistics, we have to have a normal distribution. If the workers want uh, the filling process to work so such that almost all of the cans have volumes between... 11.99 and 12.51, i.e. they want to keep the variation between volumes within a tight parameter, so they want a very small standard deviation, right? The range rule of thumb can be used to estimate that the standard deviation should be less than 0 .13, 0 0.13. What they did, remember, the range rule of thumb says that if you want, um, if you take your range and divide it by 4, that is roughly what your standard deviation is. So if you keep your standard deviation to one-fourth of this, and if you take this, which is uh, a total, uh, you know, 12.51 minus 11.99 gives you 0.52. Divide that by 4, you get 0.13. So they think that if they keep the standard deviation to less than 0.13, right, less than 0.13, then everything will be filled within that parameter, or at least the majority will. Okay, so they want you to test that claim. Here's your significance level. So getting the null and alternative is easy. We know it has to be equal. We know it has to be less than. And then compute the test statistic. Well, we can do all of this in StatCrunch. Okay. Make it a little smaller so we can see everything that's going on. All right. Stat. Now we're dealing with standard deviations, but we don't have a standard deviation option, so we have to use variances. We have one sample. And we have a summary. They told us the summary of what's going on. All right, the first thing it asked for is sample variance. They didn't give us sample variance. They gave us sample standard deviation. So you have to take that and square it. Okay, so 0 0.09 squared. You also have to um, make sure that you're squaring uh, the number here, because when you're running your hypothesis test, you'll notice the symbol here is sigma squared. You're over here having the symbol of sigma. So if sigma is equal to 0.13, sigma squared has to be equal to 0.13 squared, which is 0.0169. So you have to change this to the proper number. Then, of course, you have to change your symbol, right? It, it defaults to less, uh, not equal. you got to change it to less than because that's what we're testing. And then hit compute. You'll see that here is your chi-square test statistic, right? Anytime they're asking for a test statistic, that's what you get in this second-to-last box, right? If we were doing a, a t-test, then this would just say t-stat. And if we were doing z, it would just say z-stat. But it's always the second-to-last box, and then the last box is always your p-value. So we go down here, you can see that this is the p-value they were looking for. And you don't have to change it, right? There's been a lot of discussion. Well, do I now take a square root of that? No. Do I square it? No. Do I cut it in half because it's a one-tailed? No. Technology does this for you. What it gives you is what you want. Don't touch it. It's it. And then you answer your questions about rejecting and not rejecting and all that. Okay, so that should take care of that type of question for you.